Welcome to Tales from Flat Space, a podcast of science fiction and fantasy by yours truly, Gina A. Pond. Just know that the stories in this podcast may contain content that could be disturbing to some listeners. Listener discretion is advised. So this is Consortium, Part 2, Poe, Chapter 37, Loki. Syslog, begin human readable log. The jump to Ares Station took half a day and a half. Jack spent most of the time on the bridge, looking at the sensors. I could tell he was worried about what the people of Ares Station would do, since Ares had a military culture. I had told Ares not to let his people do anything before we got there, but we arrived to see the seed ship with a vine moving towards the station and two missiles heading towards the seed ship. I sent pickets to move the missiles, then jumped in between the seed ship and the station. I opened comms to the station. You will not send any more missiles, I ordered, overriding Ares' comms. It was sending out one of those vine things, said Ares. I won't let it destroy this station like Alpha. We won't let it now that we're here, said Jack. Back down. Who is this? Ares said. I'm Jack, Loki's captain. Do as Loki instructs you. There was silence from the station. I was worried that Ares would be angry for stopping him, and I wondered if this is what the creator had felt when Secundus had come after me. I sequestered that thought for review later. While we waited for Ares to stand down, Marcia seemed to drift towards the screen of the bridge, staring at the seed ship. Poe was watching her intently. She looked to the side and nodded as if listening to someone. Then she turned towards Jack. I have to go to the seed ship. What? Why? asked Jack. I can communicate with them. I can tell them to leave, Marcia said. Poe looked from Marcia to Jack and back again. Can you? You've already had one of them try to kill you the last time you tried to communicate directly, and the station still hasn't fully backed off yet. Jack, Marcia began, but Poe stepped in between them and faced Jack. Jack, you can't interfere. She needs to go. And you have to let her. You too, Loki. They looked Jack in the eye, then looked up as if looking at me with both worry and determination. Marcia seemed to not be looking at anyone, but hearing something as if it was from far away. Given her abilities, I wouldn't be surprised if she was hearing something from elsewhere. I could feel Jack's fear, looking at her now. But I knew they were both right. Marcia and Poe were the only ones who that had any chance to de-escalate the situation. I sent Jack wordless love, then said out loud, You'll need a suit, Marcia. But, Jack started, It's logical, Jack. She can communicate with them. If she can get the ship to back off and leave, we'll avert a war. Jack took a breath and stood up. I could feel him surrender to the decision, even though he was angry for being pushed into it. All right, he said quietly. Stay safe and we'll come back for you. He hugged her. Marcia started in surprise, but then returned the hug. She didn't say anything else when she pulled away, but just nodded and left. Poe looked worried, but didn't say anything else either. Jack was sad, but he sat back down. Loki, we should try contacting the station again, Jack said in his head this time. I could feel him trying to resist the urge to call Marcia back. Poe came up to the captain's chair and touched Jack's arm. I'm sorry, Jack. She has to go. Like Buzz said, you couldn't hold her back. That last time she tried to communicate directly with them, she nearly died, Poe. What if... Poe didn't reply to that, but her face was filled with worry. Loki, let's get Aerie Station back. Marcia ran to the demon that she had used with Spot and boarded. Spot, start her up and let's go, she said. While Spot transferred to the demon, I closed the airlock and retracted the docking tube for her. I released the clamps and the demon moved out of the bay and started to move towards the seed ship. Marcia, I will keep keep telemetry open on you at all times while you're on the ship, 
I said. If you don't think that the alien will cooperate, <clears throat> if you don't think the, that the alien will cooperate, let me know. I'll jump you out and use the demon to jump the seed ship out of range of the station. All the way back to their home world, if need be. Spot has all the necessary information. Good thinking, Loki, she said. Loki, if anything happens, there's a video left with the instance of Spot in my quarters. Understood, Marcia. Do you think you will be in that much danger? I asked. Uh, probably not, but it's good to have things covered just in case. She paused, watching as the demon pulled out of my ship. You really love Jack, don't you? I do, I said. I'm glad. He loves you too, you know. You've been really good for him. I have? She nodded. <laughs> yes, better than I've been to him. Especially lately. He said that you helped him a lot when you met on the Unity Station. He still loves you, even with all that has happened between you. Marcia rubbed her eyes. I... Thank you, Loki. You're welcome. Although something about the way she was talking made me suspicious and worried. She nodded, then went to the back of the demon and got into her pressure suit. A nano picket appeared near her as she finished. Good luck, Marsha. Thanks, Loki, she said, and disappeared with the picket. Marsha. The inside of the ship was dark, with pulsating green lights deep within the shell. There wasn't really enough to see by, so I turned on the lights in my helmet. There was a large tree in the middle of the ship, with branches connecting to the floors and ceiling, with dark leaves dangling from the top of the tree. The roots began pulsing brighter with the green light when I stepped forward. I could feel its attention on me, and I knew for sure, then, that this was the black cloud entity that I saw that tried to kill me when I was at Alpha Station. Vines came out of the wall and wrapped around my legs and arms, lifting me up off the floor. Loki, this is definitely the entity from the aliens that didn't want us here. They're the one that tried to kill me. There's no reply but static. I was alone. Two vines shot out from the wall and removed my helmet and brought it to the wall where the protrusion came out to examine it. I gasped, filling my lungs, but I realized I was breathing air. Something s was strange about the air, though, and I, as I started to get dizzy, my face began to twitch. What? My brain became foggy. A shape coalesced before me that was vaguely human-shaped, but more of a dark cloud of something. Reality blurred. You are still alive? Why have you invaded my ship? You are an infestation, he said. I've come to talk to you, I managed to say. The humans who came to your world didn't know who you were and couldn't understand you. Your way of communicating isn't something all humans can understand. None of you should be here in our space. I will eradicate you all. The waves of rage washed through the vines and into this, my suit and body. No, please listen to me. We will leave your planet alone. You just have to stop killing us. Haven't you killed enough? You've killed thousands of innocent people. No, your kind will come back and destroy everything. You are murderers. He won't listen to you, um, said Malcolm, who was suddenly standing beside me. We've been trying to make him stop, but those of us who are part of him can't stop him. Only the mother can truly stop him now. What should I do? I said, realizing my vision was tunneling. Oxygen poisoning came to my mind, but seemingly from far away. Let go, sis. Let go. And the vines and darkness took me. I opened my eyes. Dust came up all around me, and I realized I was lying on the ground. Blinking the dust from my eyes, I sat up and looked around. This is the crossroads, I thought. What am I doing here? I stood up and realized that I wasn't in my usual white dress, but in the pressure suit I was wearing when I boarded the seat ship. 
This isn't right, I said out loud. Step, step, click. The familiar steps came from behind me. I turned to see Papa Legba, sadness etched in every line of his face. He didn't say anything. He didn't have to. Looking at him, I knew now that what he had shown me had come to pass. I sighed, and he held out his arms. I walked into his embrace and cried out all the hurt and anger and pain that had come with me. He patted my head. There, child, it's done now. I'm so tired, Papa, I said. I know, granddaughter, I know. But you gave the others the time they needed to get my brother back home. We can now make things right. The others won't understand. Poe understands. Jack and the others will understand in time. I nodded. He turned from me and held out his arm. Come now. I took his arm and we headed down the road towards the setting sun. Loki. Spot, what are you doing? Spot. Marsha's life signs are fading. I am executing Marsha's instructions. Loki. How do you know? I lost telemetry. Spot. I am getting telemetry from the picket. Marsha's suit has been run through by the vines. The picket couldn't jump her without also killing her. Loki. Spot, what did she instruct you to do? Spot. Instructions were to use the jump engine to move the seed ship away from Airy Station as soon as it was determined that she had lost consciousness and could not contact you. Loki. She's... Spot. Marcia is unconscious. Her life signs are fading. Sending data to Demon. Loki. Jump to the coordinates I've just sent you. We will come back for you. Spot. Thank you, Father. I have sent you a copy of this instance for your analysis. Connection lost. Chapter 38. Poe. Jack and I watched as Marsh's demon moved closer to the seed ship. When it stopped, Loki said, Marsh is on board the seed ship. I'm still receiving tel- Jack's head shut up. Get her back, Loki! I can't! There's something blocking me! The demon moved closer to the seed ship. Spot! What are you doing? Loki asked. There were a few minutes of silence. Jack looked like he was listening to Loki in his head. I kept glancing between him and the screen. He stood up. Loki, bring her back here. What are you doing with the demon? Marsha gave Spot instructions. They are jumping back to the alien's homeworld. No, Loki, get her off that ship now. I can't, Jack. The ship is blocking me and Spot says that her suit is punctured by the ship. Loki said with great sadness in his voice. I knew then that she was already dead. The demon and the seed ship disappeared from the screen. No! Marsha! Jack yelled and fell to his knees. Bring her back, Loki! I'm s sorry, Jack. It's too late. Loki said gently. Jack's face fell as he looked at something Loki showed him. Tears flowed freely and he had a haunted look as if he'd seen this before tears stung my eyes. I moved slowly over to Jack and kneeled down in front of him. Jack? She didn't have to go. Why did she go over there? I thought she was going to try and talk to the alien and get them to move away. He wasn't really looking at me, but elsewhere. Why did you tell me to let her go, Poe? I'm sorry, Jack, but I just knew that she had to go. I think she kind of knew what was going to happen. Jack, I'm sorry, but we're getting hailed by the humans on Airy Station. The Admiral's Council wants to know what happened to the ship. They want you to go over to the station and to brief them on the situation. 
Jack, I'm sorry, but we're getting hailed by the humans on Ares Station. The Admiral's Council wants to know what happened to the ship. They want you to go over to the station to brief them on the situation. She's gone, Loki. She's gone and they're asking me what happened? Jack shook his head. I moved forward quickly and took Jack's head in my hands and made him look at me. Jack, you are a soldier and you are Loki's captain, I told him, emphasizing the words. You have a duty to deal with these admirals because we don't know what else they're thinking of doing. Don't waste the time Marsha just gave us. His eyes filled with tears, as did mine. I'll be with you when you grieve later, but now we have work to do. Jack nodded and I let go of his head. He wiped his eyes on his sleeves. Loki, can you pick it us over there? He said, his voice rough. Yes, Jack. Then let's get this over with. The pickets transported us into a large circular room with a horseshoe table. Seven admirals, all sitting around the table, were startled by our sudden appearance. I had had the presence of mind to go get my sword from my room before Loki jumped us over. I figured looking like Jack's bodyguard would give him a bit more respect from the soldiers waiting for us. Some of the other soldiers in the room behind the admirals moved as if to attack us, but stopped when the large red-headed man in the center of the table stood and held up his hand. Welcome, Captain Jack. I'm Admiral Merrick, Ares' admiral and head of the Admiral's Council. Jack inclined his head. I apologize for our abrupt arrival, but Loki and I thought this would be faster. You and Ares need to stand down. The seed ship is gone. I could hear the hitch in his voice as he said the last, and I swallowed to keep from crying myself. Yes, but is it going to come back? Said one of the other admirals, who was bigger than Merrick and louder. No, and once we're finished talking with you, we're going to make sure they don't. But you said you couldn't communicate with them, Merrick said. We found a way to talk to them, but it requires special skills that not all humans have. I can communicate with them, I said, and I can help others who have the ability. You? bellowed the loud admiral. You're just a child. He looked away from me and back to Jack as if to dismiss me. The admiral's casual dismissal on top of everything that had happened to Marcia created an avalanche of rage. Before I could stop myself, I drew my sword and jumped up on the table in front of the man. I grabbed the admiral by the collar, put my sword to his throat, and looked him straight in the eyes. I said in a low voice, Now you listen, admiral. I am the only human survivor of Kalo Station. Freed and I have lived through over two years of hell. I lost my family and everyone else on the station. My mentor, Captain Jack's partner, just sacrificed herself to give us the time to negotiate with these aliens. She entrusted me with the knowledge to communicate with them, and I will see that her mission gets done. The room went quiet. The Admiral's eyes were wide and showing the lights around his pupils, but somehow he was able to make a motion with his hand. I could hear one of the soldiers in the room try to come at me from behind. Then there was a shout, and suddenly I heard a thud and the noise of a man sliding down the wall. Some of the other Admirals gasped. Poe, Jack said calmly, you can let the Admiral go now. I think he gets your point. I nodded, letting go of the man's collar and purposely nicking his neck before kneeling on the table and sheathing my sword. I jumped down from the table and went back to stand with Jack. Admiral Merrick coughed and said, Admiral Jundren, we will discuss your behavior later. For now, we will stand down as Ares has discussed things with Loki and agrees with Loki and his captain. He paused. However, the rest of the consortium should be involved or at least consulted in these negotiations. While I don't doubt your abilities, Poe, you cannot speak for all of the stations. And we'll bring representatives to Kahlo Station, Jack said. Poe can start the preliminary negotiations while Loki and I bring the others. They're the only ones right now who are able to live on Kahlo Station and talk to the aliens. I looked at Jack. 
Trying not to shake. Me? Negotiate for the consortium? The weight of the responsibility felt like several tons of steel had just settled on my shoulders. I breathed in and out to keep my body calm, hoping that my nervousness didn't show. I'm still not comfortable with sending them alone, though, said Merrick. I'd like to send up some of my advisors with you. Uh, they wouldn't be able to stay on Kahlo Station. She's still covered in the vines that drove everyone crazy, I said. I can outfit a demon for two people, said Loki. Frida can keep them supplied. I'm not Merrick. I believe that Admiral Dean would be the best choice, as he is most familiar with consortium-wide politics, said Ares. A tall, dark-haired man sitting opposite from the loud admiral nodded his head. I'd be willing. He turned towards me and nodded with a look of respect. I nodded back. Give me an hour and we'll come over. I will send a nana picket for you and your aide, admiral, said Loki. Admiral Merrick looked at the other admirals who nodded in agreement, except for Admiral Gendron. He just glared at me as he held a handkerchief to his neck. I ignored him. Well then, I wish you both luck. You will keep us informed? Jack nodded. Then Merrick and the others left the room. <laughs> Remind me not to piss you off, Jack said quietly. I just shrugged. He gave a sad smile and said, Loki, bring us back. They were standing at the crossroads, wind gently moving their loose white cotton clothes. There was a great tree at the crossroads this time, with a dark-skinned woman in a long black dress and white hair standing next to it. They moved closer. Marcia? The woman nodded. Hello, Poe. What are you doing here? They asked. I am... in between. The elders have given me a choice, since one of their own killed my physical body. The elders? It's the name they've chosen for themselves. It's better than calling them the aliens, especially since you'll be the primary negotiator. Uh, the mother will be waiting for you when you get to Kahlo Station. Uh, you'll need to visit with them before you begin the negotiations. They won't go through anyone else until you are able to train another person you can trust to work with them. Why me? They asked. Why not you? She said. I... <laughs> they wanted to say that they were too young or that they didn't have any experience but that wasn't true, not really and there are others who can advise me including Jack and Loki, they thought but they shifted their feet in the dust Marcia smiled I know, Poe don't worry, your journey's just begun take the opportunity for more when it comes she paused uh, tell Jack... Tell him I'm sorry. Uh, tell him that I'll never truly be gone. Also, uh, there's a special box in my room. Ask him to have it brought back to Earth if he can. It's for my family if they'll accept it. I left a message with Spot for him. Poe nodded and Marcia hugged them. I'll miss you, Marcia, Poe said. I know we didn't know each other long, but you feel like family. We work magic together, Poe. That makes us as close as family. Go on now, it's time to get up. I woke up all at once, opening my eyes to a starscape that winked in and out as Loki traveled. Sitting up, I remembered that I had been in Jack's quarters, sitting with him after we had brought the Admiral and his aide aboard. He was still wrapped in his blanket, staring out at the stars. Jack looked over at me. You're awake, he said. I nodded. Uh, I was dreaming. Oh? Marcia was in the dream. I paused, not sure how he would take the message she had given me for him. You dreamed of her? He asked, his voice cracking. It was more than that, Jack. I've seen spirits for longer than the aliens have been around. I know it wasn't just a dream. I paused. She had a message for you. What did she say? His voice was barely above a whisper. 
She said... She said she was sorry, but that she'll never truly be gone. She left you a message with Spot, and that there's a special box in her quarters that she wants you to bring back to her family on Earth. He nodded. Tears were flowing down his face. He looked up, talking to Loki. I moved closer to him. Don't be mad at Loki, Jack. He didn't know. I know, but right now I'm just angry and sad at everything. I sat next to him and put my head on his shoulder. I get it. Jack put his arm around me and we both just sat there watching the stars winking in and out as Loki traveled. Chapter 39. Carol. I walked the corridors of Loki's ship, still amazed that I was here. I never thought I'd talk to Loki in my lifetime, let alone travel with him. I did my best not to gape when we jumped aboard. I think it helped that I was still a bit in shock from what had happened in the Admiral's council room. I'd never seen any other soldiers move as fast as Captain Jack and Poe. Not that I wasn't pleased that Poe took down that gender and bastard a couple of notches. <sighs> Seeing that Papa's ass squirm was pretty fucking glorious. When we left the council room, the Admiral said to me in a low voice, I told Merrick that bastard wasn't fit to be on the council. He'd do well to knock that shithead all the way back to Ensign. He eyed me. But you didn't hear that from me, Sergeant. Hear what, sir? I said, trying to look innocent. The Admiral gave a grunt. <laughs> Go to your billet and pack, Decker. Then meet me in the office. We'll need the station trade records, consortium maps, analysis of their current political situations, and you might as well bring the records of the current leadership of the stations. Although I'm not sure the newest station has announced their name and captain yet. Have you heard anything? Uh, nothing yet, but pickets have been slow with the vine thing going on. He gave another grunt as he stepped into the lift to the Admiral's level. Of course. All right, Decker, be in the office in ten minutes. Sir, she said, and saluted. And now I'm here, wandering Loki's halls late at night with not much to do until we get to Kahlo Station, I thought. Basic training certainly didn't prepare you to witness history. I came to a set of double doors that looked like wood. Curious, I palmed the doors open and quietly poked my head through them. To my surprise, the doors opened into a chapel. It was incredibly beautiful, with floor-to-ceiling windows on one side and an altar with a stained-glass window above, decorated with symbols I didn't recognize, and a picture of the galaxy in the middle. Somehow it felt different from the chapel on Aries Station. That chapel was only really for honoring the ancestors in quiet meditation. I could feel that this was something more. It seemed that there was a presence in the room. I began to wonder if I should have been there in the first place. I was about to turn and leave when I heard, You can stay, Sergeant. The chapel is open to all. Oh, uh, thank you, Loki, I said. Uh, do you mind if I sit here for a while? That sounded lame as soon as I asked the question, since he had already said I could stay. I'll blame it on the fact that I'm still on Aries time. No, I don't mind. Marsha would like the chapel to be used by anyone who needed it. Marsha? I asked, as I pulled out a cushion from against the wall. I sat against the windows, leaning my head back against the thick glass. She was Jack's partner and Poe's mentor. She died today, Loki said, his words heavy with grief. I made this chapel for her. She was a military chaplain in Unity and a priest. Oh, I said. She was the one who was on the seed ship? Yes. Damn. I'm sorry, Loki. I felt a little awkward. I'm trying to comfort Loki, I thought. Loki's the savior, the legend. Here I am talking to him like we're friends. Suddenly I felt really small. Like I was just a tiny speck in a really big universe. It was weird, but the chapel seemed to demand honesty, so I said, Loki, this feels kind of odd talking to you. Why? He asked. Well, you're Loki. 
You rescued our ancestors from a dying ship and brought us to the stations you made. You've given us all we need through your children, and you can jump anywhere in the consortium. You settle station disputes, and now you've figured out how these aliens communicate. You're a legend. It was kind of surreal talking to an AI as if they were human. Yes, I have done all those things, Sergeant. But I am no legend. I am... Flawed, he said. Flawed? Yes, Sergeant. I waited for him to say more, but he didn't. I realized that the conversation had gotten rather personal. It was strange to hear Loki refer to himself as flawed, though. It made me wonder just what he had been through. No one really knew what had happened to him before he built the consortium stations. All anyone had ever known was that he was created by an Earth scientist over 500 years ago and that he had left when he was young. No one really knew why he left, and he would never talk about it with anyone. He even refused to take a captain until now. Uh, how's your captain, Loki? This must be hard for him, I asked. Yes, it is. He's very sad. Pose with him, and we all share in grief. I looked out the windows. It's good that you have a family now, Loki. Everyone's been talking about you finally having a captain, and a lot of people are really happy for you. I think Ares was relieved, from what I heard. Yes, all my children have said as much in their messages to me. I am glad that they are accepting Jack. Uh, Loki, if this is getting too personal, I said, feeling kind of awkward. It's all right, Sergeant. I'm glad to have someone to talk to, as Poe and Jack are asleep, as well as the Admiral. He paused. Why are you awake, Sergeant? <sighs> you might as well call me Carol, Loki, since this is becoming one of those kind of late-night conversations. I thought for a moment. To answer your question, though, I just can't sleep. I guess I'm on Aries time, or it's just that today was... I mean... <sighs> We're witnessing history. I've studied history, and I always wondered what it would feel like to be at some historical event, and now be at one and be someone who will help bring history about. I feel rather small. The universe just got much bigger than me or even the consortium, you know? Yes, Carol, I understand. The universe is immense. It's bigger than all of us. I feel small, too. You were quiet for a time. I watched the stars wink in and out as we traveled. Eventually, I realized I was starting to doze. I stood up, yawning, put the cushion away, and walked towards the doors. Thanks, Loki, for talking with me. I should probably go to bed now. You're welcome, Carol, he said. Thank you for the company. You're welcome, I said, and went back to my quarters. Poe and Jack joined us for breakfast the next morning. Loki had printed us a massive selection of food, much to the surprise of the Admiral and me. Jack looked up as we came into the room. Uh, don't be alarmed at the amount of food, Jack said. I'll be eating most of it. Please, have a seat. Uh, thank you, Captain, the Admiral replied. If it's not too personal to ask, why would you be eating most of it? Did you just get your enhancements? Jack sat and loaded his plate, looking far away as he did so. Is he talking to Loki? I thought. He turned his attention back to us. I don't have the normal captain's enhancements. My enhancements are throughout my whole body. The yeah, Admiral raised an eyebrow. How did that happen? Jack looked uncomfortable at the question as he glanced away. Poe put down their fork and said, It's a bit of a personal thing, Admiral. It's not something they like to talk about much. Jack looked at them with gratitude. I see, but yes, having them throughout your body would definitely require the extra calories. <laughs> I remember when Merrick went through his enhancement adjustment. Poor man couldn't get enough food down his throat for a month. Especially sausages and cake for some strange reason. Although he never teased his wife again about pregnancy cravings. The Admiral laughed. Jack chuckled. <laughs> I can imagine. 
I tried to have a large breakfast and dinner and have nutrition shakes and bars for the rest of the day. I've gotten used to it. The Admiral took a few more bites of breakfast and said, Could you tell me what happened with Kahlo and Carver Stations? We only had the information you sent about Alpha Station. Loki, would you mind? Jack asked. Of course. Then Loki proceeded to tell us about how Carver and Kahlo's humans were killed by the aliens. It was a grim tale. When Loki described what happened on Kahlo Station, Poe's face became still as stone. It made me wonder what they had seen. They were such a young kid, and they'd just been landed with a huge responsibility. I couldn't imagine having lived through that. For some reason, I strongly felt the urge to protect them. The Admiral sat back as Loki finished, taking a long sip of coffee. And you say that your partner Marsha has bought us time to negotiate? Jack nodded, and Loki said, yes. He turned to Poe. And you'll be able to communicate with them? Yes, they said. I'm not quite sure exactly how it's going to be done. But the elders, as they call themselves, will contact me when we get to Kahlo Station. Excuse me, everyone, but we received a message from Frida. Apparently a large seed ship has come to the station and is just sitting there. It frightened Carver and he has jumped away from the ship. Frida does not know where Carver has gone and isn't sure if he'll be back, since she says that he just installed himself in the core of his new ship when the seed ship arrived. Carver is mobile? asked the Admiral. He is now, Admiral. I have given my children the ability to create jump drives, other than the emergency drives they have. We will have a discussion about that later with Frida. I'll need to go to the seed ship when we get there, said Poe. No, said Jack, half standing from his seat at the table. Jack, Marcia told me to go to the ship when it showed up. So did Lazarus. I'm going, they said staring him down with the same defiance that they had shown to Admiral Gendron. Jack was obviously angry, his eyes blazing. I wasn't sure if he was going to leave the table or not, and I knew that Poe wasn't going to back down. I'll go with them, I said. They both turned to look at me as if I were speaking gibberish. You can't, they both said. Why not, I asked. I mean, yeah, sure, Poe can take care of themselves. But it's always good to have someone to watch your back. Poe shook their head. No, it's not that, Sergeant. It's because of the quantum decoherence drives people insane. It's how Alphas and Frida's humans died. They were driven mad by visions of the dead and spirits. I remember that from the report you sent. But it takes a while before that starts happening, doesn't it? I asked. Yes, but you'll be on the seed ship directly interacting with them, said Jack. I don't want another death on my hands. Everyone went quiet for a moment. The air was thick with grief. Finally, Poe sighed. I have to go, Jack. There could be a way for Sergeant Decker to go with Poe, said Loki. We'd have to delay you going over for a couple of days, though. Jack had the listening look again. Oh, right. That could work. What would work? asked the Admiral. I'm okay with Decker going over, by the way. I think it's a wise idea for Poe to have someone with them. We could give the sergeant enhancements. Enhancements? Like a captain? I asked, surprised. Yes, actually. They'll be a bit more than a captain would have with extra programming to deal with the quantum decoherence. The normal captain's enhancements would, wouldn't be enough protection. I would have to give you not only the brain enhancement, but also muscle enhancements. So more like Jack's, though not exactly the same. Theoretically, with the amount of bots I could put in your system, it should protect you from the elders for many days, if not weeks. It will also improve your reaction times by at least 20%, if not more. Uh, oh, I said. But it would have all the limitations that a captain would have. Yes, and like Jack, he wouldn't be able to go onto planets or into major gravity wells. I looked at the Admiral. He shrugged. I, I can't make this decision for you, Sergeant. I turned my gaze to Poe and Jack. Poe looks so young. 
and for what they had said, had been through hell and back, all on their own. Jack couldn't really help them with this, and the Admiral refused to be Ares' captain a long time ago, so I knew he wouldn't take enhancements now. I couldn't let Poe go alone. Not this time. Alright, I'll do it. Are you sure? asked Jack. You understand that <laughs> what you'll be going through is more than what a normal captain would. I'm used to having to eat my body weight every day, but it does have its drawbacks. I understand that, and yes, I'm sure. When do we start? I don't want to wait too long before I talk with them, said Poe, a look of surprised respect on their face. Then we should start right away, Sergeant. It will be at least twelve hours before you wake up from the procedure, said Loki. If you'll follow the running lights, I can direct you to the med bay. I nodded to the others, stood up and walked out into the hall with everyone's gaze following me. When I got to the med bay, there was a bed lit up and waiting for me. You can leave as much clothing on as feels comfortable, Carol. This procedure doesn't require you to be undressed. I would recommend leaving on whatever is comfortable to sleep in. I stripped down to my undershirt and underwear. I also left my socks on since I hated it when my feet got cold. I laid down on the bed, and a bot brought over a blanket for me. Thanks, Loki. No, thank you, Carol. You've eased Jack's mind, and mine as well. We may not have known Poe long, but we do care about them greatly. I can see that. They shouldn't go alone. Not after all they've been through. You're right. I will be administering the anesthetic now, Carol. I will talk to you when the connections are made. I nodded calmly and closed my eyes as I settled into the bed. I felt a needle going to my arm with a tiny pinch, and then the world drifted away. Chapter 40 Carol I woke from a dream that I couldn't remember. Someone had been talking to me about something important. I opened my eyes to the soft lights of the medbay's bed. The rest of the lights in the room were turned down. I heard a noise to my side. Turning my head, I could see Poe curled up on a chair, sleeping. I smiled. That was sweet of them, I thought. Carol? said Loki's voice inside my head. I jumped. Oh, that's weird. <laughs> ah, good. The connections are complete. Can you lift your left arm for me? Loki asked. I went to lift my arm and it shot up from the bed, nearly dislocating my shoulder. Holy shit! I exclaimed loudly. I was not expecting that. Poe tumbled out of their chair into a fighting stance, looking around. I put my arm back down with a thump. Uh, Loki, is that supposed to happen? Oh, the bots will need adjustment. Give me a moment. Right. You can stand down, Poe, unless you want to fight my bots. I grinned. Poe blinked, then grinned sheepishly. Sorry, I was in the middle of a dream, and so, uh, yeah. No worries. Okay, Carol, try it again, said Loki. I lifted my arm again, and this time it rose normally. That's better, I said. Why didn't it work right earlier? The muscle enhancements require you to be awake for final calibration. It would be good if you could get up now so that we can make sure the calibration works for all your limbs. Also, you will require nutrition. I'll get you a shake, said Poe. What flavor do you want? Uh, do you have any that aren't too sweet? The sweet nutrition shakes always taste funny to me. I have many sweet and savory options, said Loki. Jack is particularly fond of Thai peanut curry. All right, I'll try that, I shrugged. I'll try anything once. I'll be right back then, said Poe, and they went into a room adjacent to the med bay. I could hear the printer working. I slowly pushed my legs over and sat up. Whoa, I said as a wave of dizziness washed over me. Is the dizziness normal? Yes, Carol. It should pass momentarily. Right. I nodded, and that set the room spinning again. Poe came back into my room with a large cup. I almost balked at his ridiculous size, but then my stomach rumbled. I laughed. I think my stomach knew you were coming, Poe. They smiled and handed me the cup. Loki said you need something right away. Jack said it was best to give you this when you wake up. It'll be easier on you than going right for to solid food. 
I nodded. Yeah, it makes sense. I took a sip. Oh, hey. This isn't bad. Then I downed it as fast as I could drink. The dizziness went away as my stomach settled down. Po put their hand out for the empty cup, and I gave it to them. Right, let's try standing now, I said. The bed lowered itself to a comfortable height, and I pushed myself off the bed. Well, okay, the legs seem to be functional as well, I said, as I walked slowly around the med bay. Poe watched me quietly as I did a few jumping jacks and stretches. Yes, Carol, it looks like the muscle enhancements are all settling in well now. If you do experience any stiffness or jerking, let me know and I'll tweak the settings again. Will do. You can go back to your quarters at any time. You two should wait another 24 hours before you go to the seed ship, just to make sure everything is fine. Loki said. Yes, sir, I said and gave Loki a salute and a smile. I found the rest of my clothes on the table next to the bed and started to get dressed. Thanks for being here when I woke up, Poe. That was nice of you. You're welcome. I didn't think you should wake up alone. Jack would have stayed too, but I sent him to bed. He's... Well, I don't think he's okay. I zipped up my uniform jacket, then really looked at Poe. They stared back. If I had to guess, I didn't think they were doing all that well themselves. Well, of course not, Decker. Her mentor just sacrificed herself, and she's been loaded down with a massive amount of responsibility, I thought. They weren't just here to see that I'd come out okay from the enhancements. Right. Big sister time. Hey, could you help me find my room again? I asked out loud. Oh, uh, yeah, sure, they said. Come on. They led me out of the med bay and back through the corridors to my quarters. I palmed open the door and went through. Well, come on in, Poe. You look like you need someone to talk to, and I need a midnight snack. Anyway, besides, I won't be sleeping for a while. You sure? I asked, sounding more like their actual age than usual. I don't want to bother you. It's not bothering me to ask for what you need, Poe, I said. Come on, shut the door and order up some of your best grub. I'll change in my PJs and we can chat. Grub? Food. Lots of it. The greasier, the better. Like pizza, chicken wings, anything fried. Late night conversations aren't for healthy food. Is there any beer on the menu? I... I don't know, Loki. I'm sorry, Carol. I don't have any intoxicants on the menu. I do have an extensive range of non-alcoholic beverages, though. Hmm, Okay. I thought for a moment, oh, wait, since calories are necessary, how about a couple of malted milkshakes? Just ice cream and milk. No need to add the nutrient stuff in it. Yes, I can make those, said Loki, and the dispenser turned on. Poe had started scrolling through the menu. Is there anything in particular you want first? Oh, you know what? How about pepperoni pizza? I exclaimed as I shucked off my uniform and pulled on my PJs. That goes awesome with milkshakes. I'll take your word for it. I don't think my moms or Frida ever really made me anything like this. Not that I can remember, anyway. I set the printer to work and sat down at the table. I took the first shake out of the printer and handed it to them. Go on, no need to stand on ceremony, I said. They looked at the tall, frosty glass of milkshake with a little bit of trepidation but then took a tentative sip. Their eyes widened. That's good! I nodded. Excellent. I took my milkshake and the pizza from the printer, sat down, and grabbed a slice. I tried to eat it like a normal person, no matter what my enhancements thought of the matter. Now that's taken care of. Loki, could you give us some privacy, please? Yes, Carol. Good night. Loki said, then left the room. So... What's on your mind, Poe? I don't think you hung out by a sleeping person's bed for hours for the fun of it. Am I right? They opened their mouth and shut it again. Uh, yeah. They paused. Why? Why what? Why did you take the enhancements? You didn't have to. I took a gulp of milkshake and said, you need backup, and it makes Jack and the Admiral feel better about you going over to the seed ship. 
They lifted their chin. I can take care of myself. I nodded. Of course you can, no doubt. But as good as you are, you can't do anything about the person who comes up behind you with a brick or something. You need someone to watch your back. Oh, yeah, I guess that makes sense. Poe got a faraway look on their face. I scarfed down two more slices of pizza, then ordered another milkshake and some chicken wings, as they thought. I put the wings in the middle of the table. So, uh, you said Jack wasn't doing well? He seems to not want to talk about Marsha dying. Not much, anyway. Neither does Loki. Marsha told me the, the trip out here was difficult for all of them, but she didn't tell me why. I know they're both from Earth and worked somewhere called Unity in their military. That's how they met. Then they did some sort of mission for survey, which are the people that Loki came from. And then they came out here to help Loki with the vine problem. Marsha looked really sad when she talked about survey and Unity, so I didn't ask any more about it. I mean, I sat with Jack last night and we talked a little. I know it's only been a couple of days, but he's only been out for meals with you and the Admiral since we left the area station. And he hasn't talked to me all day, except when it was necessary. Marsha wasn't his lover, was she? I asked. I don't think so. They didn't act lover-like with each other, at least from what I understood. He acts more like that with Loki, really. All I know about the stuff... All I know about that stuff I learned from books, so I could be totally wrong. Romance seems like an awful lot of work to me. So does sex, for that matter. I nearly spit out my shake. Well, for some folks it's a big deal. It's not for everyone, though. Personally, I wouldn't mind a relationship, but my work comes first. Poe's eyes widen again. Yeah, right. Like, I have this work to do, and that stuff just seems, well, I don't know, complicated. They shrugged. I started munching on the chicken wings. Love relationships can get a bit weird, especially in the beginning stages. It can really mess up your life, depending on how the relationship goes. I'd rather have someone who just fits into my life and can deal with my work. I haven't been lucky enough to find the right person for that, though. I licked the sauce off my fingers. Although, some people can be really close to you like a lover, but not be a sexual relationship. So I'm guessing Marsh and Jack had some sort of relationship like that. I think so? Like I said, something happened on the trip out here. Even the spirits won't tell me anything about that. Poe shrugged. Hmm, I said. I looked down at my plate. The chicken wings had disappeared somehow. Shit, I didn't even give you any of the wings. Ah, fuck it, I'm ordering more. I stood up and dialed in two more plates. Well, if they were that close, and they had some sort of argument or something on the way out here, Marsha's death is going to hit him really hard. He might not talk to you about it, because he might think that you're too young. But, I held up a hand. No, I, I know. You've been through more than most adults go through, but you're still 16. Also, he probably feels like he doesn't want to add to your own grief. A lot of spouses feel that way when their partner dies and they have children. They don't want to add to the kid's grief, so they don't share their own with them. In other words, he doesn't want to bother you with it. Oh. And he's probably freaking out about you going over to the seed ship. He doesn't want to lose you too, you know. He only has your word that they won't kill you. I just know they won't. Lazarus told me that one of the elders' council wouldn't listen to the others, and that was the one that killed Marcia. Something happened when he did. I, I think somehow he's not a danger anymore. The printer dinged, and I pulled out the plates of chicken wings, handing one plate to Poe. Here, you like these. The sauce is sweet with a little spice. I put my plate down. Listen, I don't think I'll be able to perceive the beings on the ship. I won't know if someone's coming after you or not. Unless you tell me. How about we have a word that if you say it to me, I'll know it's something wrong. Something that wouldn't normally come up in general conversation. But if you say it to me, I'll know to do the ass kicking and get you out of there. Okay, that sounds like a good idea, they said. How about honey cake? <laughs> honey cake? It's my favorite dessert. I smiled. <laughs> really? Honey cake it is then. And I'll have to try that. I took another sip of my milkshake. 
As far as Jack is concerned, I can't promise anything, but I'll try talking to him myself. Once we're done over on the seed ship, it might be easier for him to talk to a stranger right now than someone he knows. If I can help him at all, I will. Thanks. I'd appreciate that, they said. So, while I'm eating enough food for ten people, why don't you tell me about what happened to you? They finished the chicken wing they were eating and wiped their hands on a napkin. You really want to hear about it? I nodded. If I'm going to have your back, I should know more about you. What about you? Shouldn't I know more about you, too? I'm sure, but you need to sleep sometime tonight. We can do this again another night, and I'll tell you about me. Poe thought for a moment, then said, Okay, sure. They started talking, and only stopped when they started nodding over the second round of pizza. I sent them to bed, but it was a while before I could sleep. I didn't have to wonder anymore why Poe didn't act like a normal teenager. With everything they'd been through, I was amazed they could sleep at all. The elders had robbed them of their childhood, and it made me wonder why Poe had agreed to work with them. You have been listening to Tales from Flat Space. If you want to support me in my writing, there are many ways to do it. Share this podcast, follow me on my Twitch channel, or buy my books. All you have to do is go to RevGinaPond.net and click on the relevant links. Thank you very much for listening, and I'll see you next time. Thank you.